Daily Driven Exotics, also known as DDE, has quickly become one of the biggest car channels on YouTube. With over 3 million subscribers and some of the most vibrant cars on the streets, I'm sure most of you have seen them by now. Not only that, if watching their videos doesn't give you even the slightest itch to daily drive or at least want a supercar, I don't know what will. However, what I find most intriguing about Damon and Dave is not only their friendship, but their growth and business strategies on YouTube. They're averaging almost 20 million views every 30 days. That's almost 100,000 thousand dollars just in YouTube ad revenue. Not to mention, they have also implemented some very creative revenue streams within their business. So how do these two best friends who simply post videos driving cars be blowing up so fast and making millions of dollars while at it? Maybe they know something that the rest of us don't about business and success. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the DDE success story and figure out how Damon and Dave went from being broke and working at Starbucks to absolutely crushing the YouTube car niche and making millions of dollars at the same time. Not only that, I'll also be highlighting any important characteristics or business strategies that we see Damon and Dave use throughout the breakdown of their story. Now, trust me, there's quite a bit. So if you're interested in starting your own business, owning a supercar, or even blowing up on YouTube, then definitely make sure to have a pen and notebook nearby as we dive right into their story. To start, we need to begin with Damon Fryer's story as he is the main character within Daily Driven Exotics. Damon grew up in Canada and credits a lot of his success to his parents because they are both entrepreneurs. When he was a kid, his parents owned and managed a motel, a restaurant, and even an RV park. Now because of them, they gave him the opportunity to see things that a certain percentage of people don't get to see. He was privileged to have a childhood surrounded by entrepreneurial thoughts and a work for yourself type of environment. Whether at the time he knew it or not, living and working around his parents ingrained certain traits into him that would eventually cause his success as we know today. From even as a child, I got to see things that I think a certain percentage of obviously <clears throat> people don't get to see. So that's one thing that, you know, working around my mom and my dad, I believe I got a strong work ethic. Growing up around his entrepreneurial parents molded him to think differently than everybody else. He built a strong work ethic and also viewed money in a different way than most people. He learned early on that money is a tool you need to buy things, to travel, and even to go see things. His parents taught him that most people trade their time for money, which made less sense than learning how to leverage your time or leveraging your assets. He knew in the beginning that if he wanted to become successful, then he would need to leverage his money. But since he was only a kid and broke, he knew he needed to leverage his time first. You see, leveraging your time means you work for someone that has a business idea that leverages off of other people's time. In other words, employees. At 16, Damon began working for MLM companies, which is in the sales industry. They gave him a great foundation for learning how to resell goods and services to other people, and also how to teach others to do the same. The leaders at his job also helped him develop a prosperity mindset, removing the thought of lack and limitation. He also learned how to remove words from his vocabulary that could limit him as a person. Something that I have heard Robert Kiyosaki say about his rich dad and poor dad. Because it starts up here. Right, it's that fear mentality. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. My PhD dad, he says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it, I can't do that, I don't have time. It's an escape. And your rich dad used to say what? How can I afford it? The words we say to ourselves and the words we believe are the most powerful forces in the world. Saying, I can't afford it, is what poor people say. That is why they are poor. There is a true difference between being broke and being poor. Poor is a mindset that we all have the power to change, while being broke is only a temporary condition. A few years later, he became a father and got out of the MLM business and into a career in sales. Something more stable now that he had a family. After about five years in his career, he was getting sick of the limitations a nine to five had on his dreams to becoming successful. He was getting fed up that his career was limiting his ability to make an unlimited amount of money. That is, it was putting a cap on how much he could make. He knew there was only so many hours in the day that he could work for this company and that the longer he worked for them, the less obtainable his goals would be. He knew deep down that his efforts could be so much more rewarding if he applied them on his own dreams instead of somebody else's. That's when he decided to take a leap of faith and quit his career to attempt to work for himself. He happened to have a friend at the time that was making 
making tons of money through online marketing. He got lucky and his friend offered to show him exactly how his business worked. It focused specifically on affiliate marketing through emails. His friend would make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month marketing other people's products through an email list of 9 million people he acquired. Following his lead, Damon was able to bring in over 100K a month through email marketing. Unfortunately though, it all came crashing down once Canada tightened their leash on email spam laws. This forced Damon to change course, but with the knowledge and money that he had already accrued through email marketing, it made his transition to whatever business that much easier. This time it was into Facebook ads, since there was a lot of overlap there. Having quite the nest egg, he bought himself a Lamborghini Gallardo. And if we scroll all the way back on his channel, you can see these were Damon's first uploads. Inspired from Ken Block's YouTube videos, he wanted to create the same style content, but instead of a rally car, he wanted to use exotics. And Ken Block, for those that don't know, is a professional rally car driver for Hoonigan, who unfortunately unexpectedly passed away at the time of recording this video. And my prayers and condolences go out to his friends and family. Now, Damon scoured the internet to see if anyone else had this idea, and to his luck, it was just him who wanted to beat on a Lamborghini. He realized this was an opportunity he couldn't pass up, as crazy as that sounds. He referenced Ken Block's video and paid a videographer to film him going crazy in his Lamborghini. He posted it on YouTube, and to his luck, as you can see, the video blew up almost immediately. With his idea proven to work, he kept making more and more videos, each one bringing in way more views than the last. This is called the Blue Ocean Strategy, something that I have gone into detail about in my previous video on the Goon Squad Brothers. Now, if you want to check out that video, then make sure to click the link in the description or click right over here. Damon used the Blue Ocean Strategy to differentiate himself from his competition by opening an entirely new market space and creating new demand. Damon was able to create and capture an uncontested space within the car niche, making videos on beating on supercars, thereby making their competition in the space irrelevant. Although his channel wasn't really making any serious money at the time, it was, however, attracting a large audience, which Damon and hopefully you by now know the importance of. Just like an email list, a YouTube audience is perfect for affiliate marketing, and it's completely legal. A few years went by, and he was still posting videos. Hey guys, Damon from Daily Driven Exotics here, so we're on Gold Rush Rally 7. Just so happened that one day he was at a Starbucks box editing one of the videos when he just so happened to recognize a familiar face. It was his old friend Dave Coulter, who he knew from back in the day from car shows and making custom carbon fiber parts. Dave happened to be working at that exact Starbucks. That happened to be his full-time job for the past 10 years. Working my way up the corporate ladder and everything was going fine until I walked into one of my stores and saw Damon Fryer sitting there and in the parking lot a black 458. Dave also noticed a black 458 in the parking lot at the time and realized it was Damon. They instantly reconnected. Damon told him about his idea for Daily Driven Exotics and Dave immediately said he's interested. They started hanging out again and eventually Damon invited him to go on a winter car rally. Dave's help on the rally had proven to Damon that he had what it took to join DDE as a shareholder. Keep in mind DDE only had 50,000 subs at the time, but Dave knew 100% that this is what he wanted to do. He he knew that DDE was going to work and at one point he knew he had to go all in and he did just that. There came a point where we had to go all in or no in. So I was working at my job at Starbucks. I wasn't really happy with my career. Uh, I always wanted to do something bigger, more exciting, more fun. He ended up quitting his job at Starbucks and since then he's never looked back. Reunited with his old friend working on their dream to blow up DDE, they did exactly that. Their passion and dedication to their business was clearly working and their views and subscriber count just kept growing. Sponsors were starting to roll in and they were really starting to make some headway. Their dream was becoming a reality. What was once 50k views of video became 100k and then 200k and then even 400k. They were becoming so successful that Dave was even able to get his own supercar. His own Audi R8 gifted to him from Damon. That video happened to immediately go viral. And then each video after that just continued to get more and more views. Flash forward to today and their channel has brought in over 880 million views and over 3.3 million subscribers. They even have started a second channel that has brought in over 40 million views and 245,000 subscribers. All in all, it appears that whatever Damon and Dave put their mind to, they can make happen. Now in regards to how much money they make, if we use a YouTube revenue calculator like Social Blade, it can give us a pretty good estimate on how much they are earning. Now, Social Blade is pretty accurate in regards to views and subscriber growth, but they aren't that great in determining what a YouTuber's revenue is. However, if we use my channel for reference, you can see my channel CPM 
is $7.50. And I'd like to categorize my channel in the finance and car niche, so I think it's pretty accurate to use for this equation. Using about $7.50, we can see that the DDE channel just off YouTube revenue alone is bringing in around $1.7 to $1.8 million a year. And if you do the math, since their channel brought in 880 million views, that comes out to about $6.5 million total. But no one knows for sure unless they reveal their earnings. And that's not including their second channel. Let's also not forget about their clothing brand and sponsors. We can see in this video that Damon has referenced getting paid around $25,000 to accept a sponsor. And because of the size of their channel, I think it's very believable. I did an electric toothbrush offer. Yeah. I did six figures. I charged $25,000 for that. He's also mentioned working with toothbrush companies, Universal Studios, and even many other companies that can flow easily with his channel. Now, what you need to remember is not only will they make money from a fixed amount they agree with from the sponsor, but they will usually get a commission from all the sales they bring to that company if they offer that. He's also worked with companies that will sponsor his builds of his car wraps, which helps with production of the videos. I'm a strong believer that most of their income probably doesn't come through YouTube ad revenue and most likely comes from their affiliate marketing, sponsors, and merchandise. And lastly, guys, if we use a website tracker, we can get a rough idea of how much money he can make from his merch website. The tracker gives a rough estimate that his website alone through merch grosses him roughly $1 million in revenue, which is absolutely incredible. The tracker also shows us he gets about 26,000 visits to his website a month. That's around 312,000 visits a year. Now, using that for the year 2022, if just 1% of those visits, just 1% resulted in a sale of a t-shirt, that would be roughly 3,125 t-shirts sold. Now that selling at $25 is roughly $80,000 alone. And if it happened to be a hoodie instead of a t-shirt, the number is closer to $170,000. Now remember, that's if 1% of the people that went on his website bought something. And since we know he has a diehard organic audience of people that are in their 20s and 30s, I think that number is probably closer to 10 to 12%, which would agree with the website's estimate on his revenue of about $1 million in total revenue. Now, it's so often that I see patterns in successful entrepreneurs, and Damon and Dave are the perfect example. They all have a mindset for success that shows early on in life, like it was only a matter of time that success would eventually catch up to them. Unfortunately, this is the end of the story for now, but I know there is a lot we'll see from Daily Driven Exotics. With that being said, guys, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. And if you want to see the video about how rebuilding supercars made the Goon Squad brothers millionaires, then make sure to check the video out right over here. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.